time-restricted eating is so powerful and so effective that even people from the non-diabetic realm are starting to sit up, pay attention, and promote it. Check out this video. Well, I have on the table two copies of Woman's World. <laughs> and if you wonder, what am I doing with Woman's World? Uh, I saw some headlines on these magazines that I just uh, had to look into. Uh, this first one says, lose 13 pounds every five days on the world's hottest diet. Well, I thought to myself, the world's hottest diet these days has to be keto. Well, it turned out they weren't really talking about keto, but they were talking about time-restricted eating. And then I saw another woman's world not long after that that had the headline, Dr. Ian Smith's Blood Sugar Rescue Plan, Heal Your Pancreas Release Trapped Fat. I thought, well, that's got to be keto. But once again, it wasn't so much about keto as it was about time-restricted eating. So we're going to look at some of the things these magazines say. Uh, they don't exactly quite line up with a lot of what we low-carbers are saying and uh, people like Jason Fung and Dr. Berg and myself and others, but uh, they make some good points about this phenomenon of time-restricted eating, or as we like to call it, inter intermittent fasting. Actually, I don't like to call it that, but we'll talk about that in a little bit. So this first article is uh, about Heather and Terry Dubrow. They have written a book called The Dubrow Diet. And let me read some of the things that it says in the article. Across the globe, people are abuzz about a breakthrough diet strategy that promises speedy fat loss without taking away our carbs. Now, that is kind of a red flag. You lose weight, don't worry about the carbs. But if you look a little bit more closely at the diet, you realize they do have some things to say about cutting down the carbs. But regardless, uh, they, they say we call it interval eating because the key is simply adjusting when you eat. And that is their main focus. They do mention a, a cutting the carbs. They do mention watching out for uh, processed foods and so forth. But primarily, it's all about when you eat and how much time you allow yourself to eat in your day. Uh, they, they say, even if you're not perfect with portions or food choices, if you time your meals right, you're on the fast track to success. Now, again, keep in mind, they're all about weight loss here, not really much about diabetes. But they, they're they right as far as they go. There are phenomenal successes that are as a result of time-restricted eating. The article says the main goal of interval eating, the DeBrow's name for a worldwide trend called time-restricted eating, so can be called interval eating or time-restricted eating or intermittent fasting, the main goal is to wait a little longer than usual between the last calorie you consume at night and the first calorie you consume the next day. For fastest weight loss, they say we found it's best to eat during an eight-hour window, says Dr. Dubrow. Well, in some cases, uh, diabetics have gotten much more serious about it than that. Some do a six-hour window, some a four-hour window, some do a one-hour window and basically do one meal a day. But in this article, Dr. Dubrow says, choose a window that fits your schedule, maybe between uh, 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. for early birds or 1 p.m. to 9 p.m. for night owls. To enhance results, you also want to avoid processed junk and binges, but those aspects are less important than sticking to your intervals. So at the heart of what uh, the, this couple is saying, the Dubrows, and it's called the Dubrow Diet, I, I have to, <laughs> full disclosure, I haven't read the book. I've just read an article about the book, so I'm not going to say it's good or bad, but I can tell a few things just by what they say. And one thing I can clearly tell is they're all about the time-restricted eating, not so much about cutting the carbs, not so much about diabetes or A1Cs or so forth. They go on to say it's basically skipping breakfast. I'm so busy, or this is actually, uh, yeah, this is by Heather Dubrow. I'm so busy I did this accidentally for years before I ever called it interval eating. Who's ever accidentally done keto? No one. It's easier and more effective than keto. Well, I sharply disagree with that. It's not more effective in terms 
of blood sugar. It might be almost as effective in terms of losing weight. But uh, for blood sugar, keto is going to just beat this all over the place. Nevertheless, they're making a valid point, which is restrict your time of eating. You're going to get some good results. The article says, in Europe, where time-restricted eating is the number one diet craze. That's interesting. I didn't know that. A study found that folks using the tactics shed nearly 100% more weight than dieters getting the exact same calories, but nibbling all day long. Nutrition expert Mark Mattson notes that our bodies are programmed to burn blood sugar for about 10 to 12 hours after a typical meal, and then... And this is the key, we shift to burning stored fat until we eat again. So when dieters abstain from eating for about 16 hours, that means they're in an accelerated state of fat burning for four to six hours daily. And of course, you can, do, you can get more fat burning if you keep the carbs low and if you narrow your window of eating. So anyway, this is uh, an interesting article. And uh, they show some, some sample meals and snacks And some of the ones I, some of the meals and some of the snacks I like, some of them I don't. Uh, The lunch they suggest is uh, protein and healthy fat, lots of vegetables, cauliflower crust pizza. Well, I have no problem with that at all. I don't do much of the cauliflower crust pizza because it just takes too much time to make. And I am a busy guy, so a lot of times I'll just go for a single low carb tortilla, which is six grams of carbs, and I'll do it that way. But honestly, Uh, The the cauliflower crust pizza would probably be healthier. They show a snack of popcorn. Not crazy about that. Uh, That is not the best kind of a snack. And the truth is, why do you need snacks? They would be better off without them. So, again, they're yielding to the, 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 the desire, the lust for constant eating, even within their window. And, and they would be better off if they just simply had a meal here and a meal there at the uh, opposite ends of their window and nothing in between. But That's another story. They show a dinner that has uh, pasta. Uh, Again, I wouldn't be so crazy about that. And then they say, by going 16 hours without eating daily, the Dubrows say you'll be able to allow yourself a weekly cheat day to indulge in all your favorite foods while still losing. Well, that's about the worst thing you could do in terms of getting your blood sugar low. If you've got a high A1C, you don't need cheat days. But uh, again, they're not concerned about blood sugar. This next article in this other woman's world has a little more to say about blood sugar and the pancreas. This is by Ian Smith, who I understand is quite popular among some of the uh, celebrity doctors. And the headline says, heal your pancreas, release trapped fat. Well, that sounds like, you know, what we talk about a lot. And he's written a book called Clean and Lean. And his approach is simple. The article says, for fastest results, pick a daily eight-hour eating window that's convenient for you. During that time frame, you'll enjoy meals and snacks. Once again, why do they insist that we should have snacks? I don't get that at all. You'd be so much better not eating snacks. Have a meal, wait till the next meal. Have that meal, wait till the next meal you allow yourself. Forget about the snacks. Anyway, and he goes on to say, any food very close to its natural form is considered clean. I agree with that. Uh, High quality protein, yep. Healthy fat, yep. Whole grains, nope. (laughs) Not so much the whole grains. But again, uh, he's really not uh, an expert or someone who's passionately involved in uh, helping diabetics. Uh, However, this interval eating will help diabetics. The article says there are a number of reasons Dr. Smith's approach works. For starters, studies show that clean foods are hard to break down, forcing our bodies to incinerate hundreds of extra calories during digestion. And I have, I've heard that in other places as well. And when you add time-restricted eating, known as also as intermittent fasting, things heat up even more. Our, bur- our bodies burn sugar as their main fuel for several hours after a typical meal, explains Dr. Smith. Once the sugar is depleted... We shift to burning stored fat for fuel. If you eat during an eight-hour window and fast for 16 hours, you can burn stored fat as your main fuel for up to 10 hours a day. I'm not at all sure about that, especially if you don't eat low-carb during your eating window. But nevertheless, the idea is, is pretty sound, which is you want to burn fat and stop burning all that sugar because if you're eating a lot of carbs, you're not going to burn all you, all those carbs as sugar and you're going to end up storing some and you're going to get fatter and on and on. 
Goes on to say, your pancreas plays a surprising role too. The gland is responsible for churning out all the insulin your body needs to get blood sugar into cells where it can either be burned for energy or stored as fat. In today's world of blood sugar spiking processed foods, and that's a good phrase, listen, blood sugar spiking processed foods. I'm glad they recognize that. Processed foods do spike blood sugar. Uh, your pancreas can burn out, says Dr. Smith. Yeah, it can. The gland stops making enough insulin to get sugar out of your blood, which causes irritation and damage, sending your body into crisis mode. Your system tries to clear away sugar as quickly as possible. It's easier for sugar to be stored as fat than to be burned for fuel, so that's what happens. Virtually everything you eat turns to flab. The good news, fasting for 16 hours a day, it gives the pancreas a daily rest with no blood sugar to manage at all. And let, that's so good, I need to repeat that. Fasting for 16 hours a day, and uh, basically it means you eat during an eight-hour window, and then you go 16 hours without eating. It says it gives the pancreas a daily rest, and that's a very good thing, with no blood sugar to manage at all. And he goes on to say, preliminary research shows it allows the gland to heal and restores insulin function. A healthy pancreas reduces the risk of diabetes, yep, and countless other diseases, plus up to 400% more of what you eat turns to energy. One study even found a healthy pancreas helps us lose weight four times faster. And it gives an example. It says, after a long struggle with overeating and obsessive calorie counting, a lady named Jessica Reynolds, age 44, discovered real food makes me feel too good to choose junk. And then she heard about time-restricted eating. The pounds poured off. I like that. The pounds poured off. And it says her dangerously high blood pressure dropped. Even her anxiety eased. I eat awesome food like burgers and fajitas. Hopefully the burgers without the bun. Without ever restricting my calories, I'm full, happy, and have high energy. And again, they give uh, examples of a breakfast, which is uh, an egg and uh, looks like some avocado over a piece of toast. Uh, they could do better with some kind of a low carb. But if the, if the uh, toast is from a relatively low carb bread, something that has, say, eight or seven or eight net grams of carbs, that wouldn't be too bad. They show lunch as a salad, healthy looking salad. So that's not a problem. Again, snacks, apples, no no snacks you're better off without if you have to have snacks have some nuts and some cheese not apples anyway dinner shows fish and some steamed veggies which is great so these people are on the right track even though i don't completely agree with everything these folks are saying in general i find this encouraging what these two magazine articles represent is the fact that people outside the realm of diabetes are starting to see the benefits of intermittent fasting, or as some like to call it, time-restricted eating. In some of my previous videos, I've recommended skipping a few breakfasts each week, and some people have asked me, well, what's the point of skipping breakfast? Well, what I've just been sharing with you is the point of it. By compressing the amount of time each day you allow yourself to eat, you give your pancreas and your metabolic system a desperately needed rest. And something they didn't say, but they should have, is that you also allow your insulin levels to drop down low for a while, and that is a very, very good thing. And while I'm on the subject, I have to say that I really like the term time-restricted eating much more than intermittent fasting. In the minds of many people, fasting is associated with not eating at all for a whole day or more, and lots of folks are immediately turned off by this and say something like, well, I could never do that without even knowing what it really means. These articles and what I am saying are not uh, telling you go entire days without eating. In some cases, that could be helpful. But for most people, it's not necessary. You can still eat. You just can't graze all day long. Cut the window of time when you eat for a day down to eight hours or six hours and then close up shop. Don't eat another bite until that window of eating becomes available the next day. Most people can handle that without much trouble, and it really isn't fasting as far as I'm concerned. It's just disciplined eating. I mean, technically, if you go five minutes without eating, you're fasting, but in practical terms, that's not fasting. And the same is true with the person who skips breakfast, has their first meal at noon, and then has a nice dinner at 6 p.m., and after that refuses to eat another bite until noon the next day. 
And if you don't want to do that every day, just do it several days out of the week, and other days you have your three meals. Just make sure that your evening meal is not much later than 6 p.m., except in rare cases. Now, in these articles that I've shared, these folks were not really concerned with diabetes. They were all about weight loss. But this same idea that will enable you to lose weight, that is compressing your window of eating to eight or six hours each day, will also go a long way to lowering your blood sugar and bringing you from diabetic levels on your A1C to non-diabetic levels. If you're dealing with an A1C of 8, 9, 10, or more, you really need to do more than just narrow that eating window. You also need to radically slash the total carbs in your diet. You just can't pig out on snack cakes, guzzle sodas, eat huge platefuls of rice, stuff yourself with potatoes, and constantly eat bread and bread products, and then do your time-restricted eating and hope to put a major dent in your A1C score. Yeah, it would help a little bit, but by itself, it won't get the job done. But I am encouraged that people and doctors outside the diabetic community are starting to get the point of narrowing that window of eating. This is an idea whose time has come. This is no fad that's going to be gone in a few years. And the reason it's here to stay is that it just works. It really, really, really works. So if you're grazing all day long, eating meals and snacks and meals and snacks from the time you get up in the morning until the time you go to bed, stop it. Cut that window of eating. Be disciplined. You should lose weight. Your metabolic system should revive. And if you combine this with a serious effort to keep your carbs fairly low, your A1C and your fasting glucose should come down, down, down. And who knows, you might even end up being interviewed by me on this channel and becoming one more trophy in the quest of beating diabetes. Well, that's it for now. If the video was a blessing, give it a thumbs up so YouTube's artificial intelligence will recognize its value and make it one of their recommended videos, and more diabetics will be able to see it and be helped by it. And consider subscribing to this channel and then clicking on the bell icon so that you'll be notified every time we post a new video. God bless and see you again soon.